guys and girls. In this very special episode, I get to criticize one of the giants of the YouTube science community. The Goliath in question is SciShow, and a link to their channel should be right around here. Before I get started, I want to make one thing very clear. Gravity is hard to understand. It's really easy to get details wrong when you're trying to explain it to people who aren't already experts in physics. To quote my favorite doctor, it's a complicated bundle of timey-wimey stuff. So this isn't a judgment on SciShow's competence. It's just a correction on an easy-to-make mistake. In their most recent video, I noticed quite a big problem right around here. Take gravity, for example. Newton figured out how it worked. The apple is being pulled toward the earth while the earth is being pulled toward the apple. Everybody used that framework for 200 years until the anomalies started piling up. For instance, based on how other planets interacted with each other and how light bent in space, Newton's view didn't seem to be true anywhere except here on Earth. So Einstein came along and suggested the existence of photons, which pulled less massive objects toward more massive objects, and even pulled stuff with no mass toward a massive object. All ideas that Newton would have definitely objected to. And lo, classical mechanics made way for quantum mechanics. And physics has never been the same. To put it simply, this is wrong. Light being made of photons doesn't really have anything to do with how Einstein's theory of gravity works. See, the problem with Einstein is that he just did too much. He revolutionized so many areas of physics that it's really easy to mix up which contribution came from where. And that seems to be what happened here. You see, in modern physics there are really two realms that don't mix all that well. Kind of like two unmixy things. One is gravity which applies on the very large scales and very massive objects. This is where you get things like black holes and like being bent by stars. On the other end of the spectrum is quantum mechanics, which only applies to the very small. The confusing bit is that Einstein made breakthroughs in both of these areas. In fact, over a decade before Einstein revolutionized our understanding of gravity and space-time, he published a paper that offered up an explanation for the photoelectric effect. That's actually what he got his Nobel Prize for. So, to describe this in the most basic terms, if you shine a light on certain surfaces, it can knock electrons free. The problem with this is that if the frequency of the light is below some critical value, it won't knock any electrons out. It doesn't matter how bright the light is, no electrons will get kicked off. And this doesn't jive with a theory of light that's purely wave-like. You might ask, why do we care about some obscure experiment? Well, because Einstein did. And instead of complaining about how the experimental result didn't match, uh, didn't match her prediction, he offered up an explanation. And that was that light was actually made up of these tiny packets of energy called photons. In the materials that were being studied, you needed one photon to knock out one electron. If the frequency or energy of that photon was too small, it couldn't knock out the electron. Didn't matter how many photons you threw at that surface, no electrons would get knocked off. It's kind of like a baseball player who can only bunt. Doesn't matter how many balls he hits. None will ever get knocked out of the park. He'll never get his home run. Now you'll notice, gravity never came into this. And that's because it had nothing to do with the discovery of photons. So you might ask, what about gravity? It's important to note that before Einstein came along, almost every object in our solar system was perfectly well described by Newton's theory. He even predicted the existence and position of Neptune, just because Uranus's orbit was a little screwy. Insert your favorite ass joke here. In fact, at the time of Einstein's formulation of gravity, there was only one experimental observation, to my knowledge, that was at odds with Newton's predictions. That was the orbit of Mercury, or if you want to get technical, the precession of its perihelion. Physicists actually tried using the same trick that worked on Neptune to fix this, and predicted a hypothetical planet called, and I'm not kidding here, Vulcan. Sadly, we were never able to find Spock's homeworld. Because that's not what was messing with Mercury's orbit. It was actually something far more fundamental. We had to wait for Einstein to formulate a theory of gravity that could explain what was going on, not as a force instantly acting at a distance, but as a warping of the empty space that surrounded any object with mass or energy. It was his theory that actually predicted the correct bending of light as it passed near massive objects, an effect that had never been observed at that time. 
This prediction was later vindicated by the observation of starlight as it skimmed the sun during the 1919 solar eclipse. The important thing is that the prediction did not rely on light being made up of photons. So there you have it. Photons had little to nothing to do with Einstein's theory of gravity, or as it's more commonly known, general relativity. Still, despite the mountains of evidence to the contrary, some tiny part of me hopes Einstein was wrong, and that somewhere out there, Spock's looking down on us from Vulcan. So thanks for watching. And SciShow, if you're watching, shot in the dark, but call me. I'd love to consult with you guys on physics -y videos in the future. Hope you enjoyed this brief discussion of the history of gravity, and if you want to see more, please like, comment, and subscribe. Holy hell, going first is not easy. No!